First of all, I want to welcome Sheena uh, and uh, Shirley. I'm so glad that you're here today. We're very excited about what's going on. And this is part, uh, this is the, uh, uh, I guess, uh, the end of Reconciliation Week here in Lethbridge, Alberta. So you're also part of that that's going on. So just so you know, before we start, however, I want to acknowledge the land acknowledgement. Uh, Lethbridge Pub, oh, first of all, we're coming from Lethbridge Public Library and it's word on the street that uh, is sponsoring uh, this event. So let's do the land acknowledgement first. The Lethbridge Public Library acknowledges that we are gathered on the lands of the Blackfoot people of the Canadian Plains and pays respect to the Blackfoot people, past, present, and future, while recognizing and respecting their cultural heritage, beliefs, and relationship to the land. The city of Lethbridge is also home to the Métis Nation of Alberta, Region 3. So welcome, Sheena. Uh, welcome, Shirley. Uh, just a little bit about Sheena. I've known her for a number of years, and uh, she's a colleague, uh, a leader, a uh, really strong leader in the community. And I've admired her for so many years, and I was really excited when I saw she was part of this language project. So immediately I asked, can she be part of our, uh, part of our word on the street? And of course, the answer was a resounding yes. <laughs> So that was good. Sheena is from Bigani. Uh, she was born and raised there. And she's, um, she's uh, very proud of her one and only granddaughter. Uh, her English translation for her name is Coming Home Pipe Woman. And her name is Sophie. And she's the reason I wrote, Sheena says she's the reason she wrote the book. Uh, she wanted to let her know when she came into the world that she was loved. So that is really, really nice. So Sheena, if you could introduce Shirley and then the rest of the show is up to you. We'll leave some time at the end for question and answers. So there you go, take it away. <clears throat> okay, uh, Linda, thank you for the introduction. And I also wanna thank um, Trevor Perry Chicken and uh, Bigani Nation radio station 106.3 for hosting the Zoom conference here. And, and I'd like to introduce my, my friend, my elder, my mentor, uh, Shirley Crochet, who has always been very strong in our cultural ways and also been very strong with the Black language. And um, and these are the kind of people that we need to, um, that we really need to um, hold in high esteem within our communities so that um, we can carry on the language because the language is something that's, you know, not, as I think my, at my age and my challenge is to speak the language and seeing our elders passing on it giving, it makes people like Shirley and the fluent speakers more and more precious to us. And so this is, I introduce Shirley Kroshu. Okay. Get connects to Maxim. Wow. Greetings, everyone. Mr. Akok, Mr. Miniskim. Nimhtotopi Gani. I'm going to say, folks, <laughs> and then I know, uh, um, he got him in that talk. A woman's just to Again, with greetings, I am known as uh, ancient or long time Buffalo Stone, and from Bikani, and I really am strongly an advocator for the. Blackfoot language and hearing our Blackfoot language and speaking, learning, all that entails in what I uh, promoting our language. Thank you. Uh, 
<clears throat> so do we start reading? Yes, if you, you're taking it over from here, maybe introduce your book and uh, uh, maybe just preamble it with the uh, project, how you got selected to do this. I think that was uh, quite, a, quite an exciting uh, opportunity for Blackfoot speakers. And I think there was also some from Stony. is that correct? Yes, and uh, yeah. yeah, so that, that to me was just one of the most awesomest uh, project that I saw for a while. Okay. <clears throat> okay, I've always been a writer in my own way. Um, I guess I've always uh, relied on writing stories from my perspective, um, whenever something, if I encounter a, um, an exciting event or something, I usually go home and I just jog it down. And so I always write these little stories. And again, just like um, how we, we don't um, value our own self-worth, I um, never really thought that my stories had any uh, value to them. So anyway, I, when I went to university, I took um, my major in university is the English language. And so once, and I under, learned about it and its history and everything. And so I'm familiar very much with the English language. And so <clears throat> I was always inspired by the people that I met who were authors. And those authors, um, the, the writers, I always thought to myself, one of these days I wanna become an author. So in that opportunity came up through, to do this publication through the Calgary uh, Public Library. Uh, they were hosting, uh, oh wait, let me go step back a bit. Um, Elena Miniguns from the Sisiga Nation was coordinating um, a project with the uh, Calgary Public Library and doing some research on um, Blackfoot, uh, the Blackfoot language. And what she noticed within the library is that um, there were no children's books written in Blackfoot. Everything, there were Blackfoot books written, but they were written in English. So she took it upon herself to contact um, Richard Van Camp last, uh, last year in 2019. And Richard hosted a two week writing um, writers camp in Calgary at the library. And um, it started off with 20, um, 20 writers. Uh, 20 writers were at the, at the camp. And at the end of the day, uh, 15 of the writers um, wrote, had their um, books published. And out of the 15 publications, um, I think it was seven or eight are in Blackfoot, was from the Blackfoot, Sikani, uh, Siksika, and Gaina. So we all had um, books that were published. And so we ended up, uh, we, which is how my book came to be through the mentorship of Richard Van Camp, who is a very well-renowned author himself, First Nations Indigenous author. And I thought, you know, with, with that opportunity coming up, I'm gonna jump at it. I'm gonna try it. And today I produced my first uh, children's booklet. And my booklet is called Akumimthani. And um, my book is written, as Linda had introduced, is written um, from for my granddaughter, Sophie Akhtia And I wrote the book for her so that she'd have something throughout her lifetime to know that her grandmother loved her very much and that her grandmother, that a lot of, you know, when I look back on my own life, a lot of my um, memories are with my own grandmother and the love that 
she gave me, who was um, Maggie Provost. And so she had a huge impact on my upbringing. And um, she was always the one that reminded me that we needed to stay close to our culture and stay close to our language. And so I'm very on, I'm really excited here today to do, to do our book reading and uh, we, will get, uh, we will get started. So have a little patience with us. Um, I'm gonna be holding the book up and I'll be opening the book um, to the pages that we're reading. So, Akko <clears throat> Mimstan, which means love. Yeah. Akko Mimstan, Tomo Tapa, Iyo. Aisho, Po, Si, Nakosi. Love is the first ray of the morning sun. Ki amato ki amato sumani. And the smell of sweet pine smudge. Akumim stani. Anako, ama, ki naksupokao. As is tixkakis. Love is the bright smile on baby's face. Isteti kasi. And the and the room lights up with pride. Akumimstani Aksumo Dosi Ani Kikristo non Osinovski Sini. Love is the feel of Mama's soft lips kissing chubby cheeks. Ki kinmon o. And the security of daddy's strong hug. Akumimstani adna kidak sinoski pokini tao. Love is the slobbery lick from the doggy's tongue. Ki itamawa pinakosi. And tail. Happily wagging to greet the day. Love is the wiping away of tears. And learning to face fear. <clears throat> Love is the tender voice of Grandma's prayers. <clears throat> and the drumbeat of the grandfather's ceremony songs. <clears throat> Love is the first sound of thunder when springtime comes. Love, Love is the sound of raindrops nourishing the earth. And new life begins. Love is love is those first steps <clears throat> that set you free. <clears throat> Love is the life that builds you step by step.
que um, quizá estamos en donde and breath by breath <clears throat> y toma tapo a comer pistame and knowing your journey began with love can can Oh, Sugapi, uh, you guys, that was really good. That is a very touching story. Um, I really like the, the imagery and all the feelings that it generated. And that's exactly how we feel as mothers, fathers. And so it's really, really beautiful. So I want to thank you for... I'm sorry, I want to thank you for writing that beautiful story. <laughs> I always have technical issues here, but that's okay. Um, did you want to tell a little bit, um, like uh, you had mentioned to me that you're going to be doing some future stories. Can you give us an idea of how that might go? I've already started a few, um, a few things. I've got a few things generating right now. Um, my next story is going to be focused on Pikani women. Mm. It's going to be about Pikani women. So I won't give too much detail about it because I want to um, keep it a surprise. But it's also really this um, opportunity has really um, inspired me to continue to write. And once, like, because I didn't think it was a it was really um, possible to do something like this. I didn't think I had the ability. And now that I know I can do it, I've got more stories to tell. And I, and I do want, a lot of my stories are going to be about Bikani women. And, um, you know, growing up, um, growing up sometimes because we grew up in that era where alcohol was really impacting our nation. And there was a lot of other um, issues that impacted our people and it prevented a lot of us from really understanding our cultural ways. And this, um, I guess I want to leave something behind so that our children, our young ladies will be able to look back on and uh, you know, to uh, to conduct their life in a good way, and to get to conduct their life to love their children, especially you know because love is the foundation of um, of life. And if we can love our children with our heart and soul, not with money, but like what we say in here, all those you know. Creator sending us blessings every day, waking up every day. Those are the things that really resemble love. Not um, not buying them the best um, runners and leather jackets or whatever it is. Those are material things. The real love is what the time you spend with your child and the teachings that you give your child. And that's what I want for my granddaughter, Sophie. But I also um, I also want to um, acknowledge my um, niece Christy Northpegan, who um, did the illustrations for my book with, and um, she is also a well-renowned artist, up-and-coming artist, and she's done a number of um, um, really interesting projects in Calgary. And she does have her own company. So if any other inspiring artist uh, would like a, an illustrator, let me know. And you can also buy the book um, by emailing me. And I'll leave that information with Linda. But I want to turn it over to Shirley to, um, to say a few words. Well. I guess what I can share with you is that, you know, uh, 
she and I have taken this initiative and in that, and, you know, like with the whole story, it's, uh, it shows that she really, um, you know, um, carefully thought and have seen her um, granddaughter and um, all the um, blessings. It's something that we, um, you know, sometimes uh, uh, don't really acknowledge um, when we, our grandchildren, you know, do something special. You know, that's very encouraging. He said, you know, that was my upbringing coming from grandmother, going in grandmother's house. You know, not only did I have that security, but I also had that uh, that love that come from me, from grandmother, plus all her um, other friends, her peer group that used to all come around and that. And they all took the special time to uh, show you and help you and, you know, guide you as you uh, proceed on in life. So those are some of the things that we, um, you know, I think we do lack in some of our communities. And, you know, I think that, uh, um, you know, like with this book that really goes to uh, show, you know, uh, the happiness, you know, when you um, watch and be with your own uh, children and your own, your grandchildren. Um, just quickly on some of the translation, like sometimes it's difficult. It's, it's, it's hard to actually translate, um, you know, something, you know, word for word. And because um, you have to look at it, you know, over the years, my experience in uh, working with the uh, Blackfoot language, you have to... Um, really um, uh, focus on what you're talking about and take that so that you could say it in a way where it's understood. And so I know that's one of the um, ongoing problems that we have, um, you know, when, you know, actually translating, because it took me a long time to find out, you know, love, okay, um, but then, you know, like looking at it in the story content and, oh, okay, it has to do with, you know, the term, you know, showing your, your you know, showing your love. Mm -hmm. So that's, thank you. Mm. Um, just a thought when you were speaking, uh, the both of you have considered uh, putting a sound recording to the book so then people can hear the, the flow of the language. I know Sheena, that was your main focus, the language. And to hear the word uh, rather than reading it on the page is much more, to me, a, a much more richer experience. So uh, I'm just kind of dropping that seed into your lap if you haven't already thought about it. Uh, but I really think hearing and then being able to read along with it would be really a wonderful experience for the parent that's maybe just learning Blackfoot themselves or even a fluent speaker who, who, who doesn't read the, the English language. Um, I mean, the, the translated language, you know what I mean? So uh, have you ever considered anything like that? Yes, I have. Um, I was actually in the process of um, doing that, uh, getting a recording um, of the book, but COVID hit mm -hmm. and COVID um, has done so many different things to us. Even um, just recently, the publisher just reopened their, their uh, place so I can get so I can, right now I'm out of books. So I, they just got back. So COVID has done many things. So I think now this next phase, I will be working on a, a voice, a voice, um, the story on just a voice, act, like voice action and you, you can, where you can download both the story and I'll mail you a copy of the book. 
Oh, that would be excellent. Yeah. Um, the other thing is um, here at the libraries, uh, Chinook Arch purchased a lot of the books and they've distributed it amongst the libraries. I don't know if they're cataloged yet because I think we got all the books just when COVID hit. So we just checked our bibliography. It's not in yet, but I'm sure we're going to have copies uh, uh, so people can check them out if they can't uh, if they can't purchase them or whatever. So that's another way to to access it through the libraries. Um, of course, I work at the library, so I'm going to promote that. But um, uh, we're we're really working hard to keep the libraries open. And uh, as you know, Kainai has their own uh, public library, and uh, so we're we probably have the largest collection right now of Indigenous stories and books. Our librarian is Kathy Goodstriker, and she's really went out of her way to make sure that the uh, that we have a lot of books that uh, not just uh, from the Blackfoot Confederacy, but from other tribes as well, uh, from the Northern tribes, uh, from the US tribes. So she's always looking, looking, and I, I, I was gonna ask her if she has this yet, because she just reopened for curbside, uh, I think last, uh, in the last couple of weeks or so. So that's, that's something uh, for the, the parents to do. And I know, uh, Sheena, you work for uh, Kainai Board of Education right now. Yes. Yes. And um, when they do their workshops, they often give away books. So you might want to put the bug in somebody's ear about the books. <laughs> do that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so um, anyway, I think that they would really be wanting to um, to do something to give out the books, uh, to distribute them when they do different things, parent workshops and so on. I know they produced, uh, I think a couple board books, but right now they're just words. And I really like the conversation part of it, being able to put the words together to, to make a, you know, like if I learned how to say apple, for example, but then when I put it into a sentence, like uh, it, it, be, it changes. And then how do I know the rules for that? Who do I ask for all of that? Uh, so if we don't hear it again, I'm, I'm really uh, stressing the word here, then we're not gonna be able to say it properly. And um, anyway, there was a lady um, from, I think she's from Bikani, but I might be wrong, but her grandson uh, or her son works for uh, biochemistry company and they translated they won some award for oh no I'm sorry it's uh, uh, astronomy that area and he that the company he works for won an award for discovering something about black holes and she translated that whole document into uh, Blackfoot and read it at this where they when they got the award and that, that and exactly what Shirley said, some of them, some of the concepts she has to really think about. What do they mean? What do they mean to us? So I really appreciate uh, that translation part of it. Uh, so Shirley, you're doing an excellent service out there. And I know it's a lifetime work. It's, uh, it's not something that's easy to do, but it, it, uh, it has to be done in order to forward the language. But I don't want to talk too much. I want to give our people out there, our participants, if anyone has any questions that they would like to ask, or if you have anything else you'd like to add as people are typing up their questions, uh, go ahead. And so uh, the person that you're talking about with the um, the astronomer part? Yeah. He was from, they were from Sixiga. Hmm. Oh, Sixiga, that's right. That's right, yeah. Yeah, I, I, uh, I, I couldn't remember because I, I would like to, I guess he came here once and at the University of Lethbridge and I would sure like to get him back and 
really promote that because I thought that was just so amazing. <laughs> the work that must have went into that, eh? <laughs> yeah. The other thing that, um, that I see happening is uh, in the, my, my, my uh, nephew works for, um, for Bill Gates. Um, he, f he started the immersion school on the uh, uh, Salish and Kootenai tribes. And then he moved on to work with Bill Gates for the Northwest tribes. But what they're doing is karaoke. And they're translating songs into the, like, the Salish language. And then people get up and they sing like an Elvis song or whatever. And so I thought that was quite interesting. So uh, I thought that would really be something uh, if you guys are interested, we could do a karaoke night and people could translate a song into Blackfoot. I could just see Shirley dancing to an Elvis song. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Maybe uh, your radio station could be part of that, hey? Yes. So, there you go. So at the, I, I tried to do it a couple of years ago, but we just weren't ready for it. Uh, it wasn't it wasn't there yet. So, uh, but I know Olivia's uh, Olivia Tailfeather's son. He does some of that. He sings in Blackfoot and takes some of the uh, songs and and translates them into uh, to Blackfoot. <laughs> so. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, um, right now we don't have any questions. I, you guys probably covered a lot, <clears throat> but I just don't want to leave it open for uh, some other ideas that might, might come in. Uh, we still have about maybe, I don't know, 15 minutes left here before we, uh, we go on to the next part. Uh, what about your radio guy? Does he have any questions he'd like to ask? Well, I'd just like to, uh, my name is Keith D. I'm from Big Animation and I'm one of the radio personalities here. Um, so what I'd like to offer um, part of the Big Animation radio is that we can actually do the professional live recording for the audio part of this book. Uh, we'll make a plan with Sheena and Shirley to come back in, sit in our production studio, and uh, we can record that. And then after that, we can take it and edit it. If they want to do voiceover or overdubs on that, then we can get it all professionally done. And it's not going to be any cost to them. Oh, wow. So there's not going to be any cost. Uh, but what we ask in part is that uh, we can air this periodically throughout. We stream it um, online and to the radio station, make it part of our weekly program as we go along. And uh, what we were talking about here lately was having a Blackfoot speaking contest, right? You know, and get some of the, uh, you know, the, maybe the non-speakers are the ones who are learning how to speak. We can offer them... Um, a sentence, you know, in collaboration with maybe speaking with Sheena and Shirley, because both of them are actually educators. And I know Sheena's been in the education field for uh, more than 30 years, mm -hmm. and she's now just turned 32. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they do have their part in educating, and, and this is really good because they both have that uh, amazing um, drive and love to teach, uh, you know, the people how to eat for you, you know, speak the language. and. And let's have a conversation in Blackfoot rather than just speak the words, right? Mm -hmm. And so I really like the way this book has been set up to the fact that we're going to speak to Blackfoot first and then we'll go and follow with the English. So it was really, really well put together. And, uh, you know, can we say challenge, right? I challenge the Benny Nation, all the listeners, grab a book when you can. When they're, I know she said they were out for the moment. They'll be coming back to production soon. Yes. Okay. And, uh, you know, we'll get the audio tape here recorded. Like I said, it's no charge to you guys. Oh, and thank then, you. you know, it's, it'll be all professionally thank done. You. And then um, we can have those matching together and then away we go, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, wow. Thank you. That's awesome. Yeah. So, everybody at the Benny Nation Radio does thank you very much for your time in this book here. Uh, Tanya Plain Eagle has been very instrumental in having this radio station here at the Benny, News, the, the Benny Nation because of the communication and uh, it is right now we've been open Monday will be one week since we've launched and uh, um, you know we've had a really really awesome response from all our listeners out there in radio land streaming land you know and so it is positive people are looking forward to it, especially the elders they're listening they're waiting they're they're anticipating this blackfoot program 
And uh, the other thing too, and I'll give this to Shirley and Sheena to, to sit with. Um, I came up with this idea for a place I used to work at, the Hit Smash and Buffalo Jump. And these puppets, eight seat for you, know, they're speaking Blackfoot, right? And they were doing the introduction too. So it kind of built momentum from there. And, um, but there was, there was, in a sense, there was some, some, we're not getting political or right or left wing here, but we were told that the puppets were not allowed to speak Blackfoot anymore in the oh, provincial wow. interpretive center, yes. And uh, this came from the uh, deputy minister. Um, and just because the reason was, <laughs> I don't understand what they're saying. Well, we're here to give you, and you know, we, we tracked it down. Okay, these are the numbers, you know, these are the animals. And uh, the puppets would go up there and say, you know, I'm really hungry for kidney, right? In Blackfoot, right? And the, these ladies and elders were just laughing. We're having a really great time about this. So that dwindled down the puppet program and eventually it just dissolved to, to nothing. So, you know, I think that would be really great, especially for children and parents, mm -hmm. those who have gags at the school, they hear, you know, puppets speaking in Blackfoot. Yeah. Because you know what? It works. Because I learned Sesame Street French yes, yes. <laughs> from watching Sesame Street, you know, and I still have those French words in my head because it was repetitive, it was repetitive, and it was fun, mm -hmm. right? Very visual and stuff. Because Blackfoot language um, is descriptive, right? It right. describes a verb, it describes an action. So, hey, there's a great positive word, very powerful. Let's take action, let's teach, and uh, let's. Um, repatriate and, and continue to have this black, beautiful Blackfoot language spoken amongst all our people right. that wish to speak it, you know? Mm -hmm. I totally agree. That, that wasn't my question. I guess there was more of an input and, uh, into what we're doing here. But um, once again, you know, I really thank Shirley and Shina for stopping by. You guys are great for all the work that you do. And I do know that it does take a bit of a challenge translated into written language. Yes. Um, there is arguments out there. And I've seen one of the worst places to look for information is on Facebook. But I did see um, one time some people having a debate and oh, you don't write it like that in Blackfoot. Oh, you don't. And I was thinking, well, it does have a written language. It's yeah. Not oral, <laughs> you know, right. but we're doing the best that we can to be also <laughs> another, even if it's not in your <laughs> syllables and there's a hyphen on top of this one to make it sound short, you know, yeah. hey, let's just work together because Last week, we had Vera Potts here, and she really gave a strong message to, okay, you know, these young people are going to start speaking. Let's not make fun of them. Because when we started to learn of English, we didn't know English, and we had broken English. Nobody made fun of us. We just helped each other along to speak. So that's what's happening now. The elders, Vera Potts is here, Morris Lewell, Eric Croshu, Herman uh, Yellow Old Woman, Alden Weasel Child. They were here and they're saying, yes, let's help them along so that they can start to learn. And we'll just bring them there. Well, let's, let's, it's a process. There's no destination. No. Left, Blackfoot language is a process. Our way of life, you know, the bath of these, you know, the bath of these is a way of life. Mm -hmm. There's a process. You can't hurry to the end. Because when we hurry to the end, what's there? Okay, my turn to go to the happy hunting grounds, the sand hills, <laughs> the spirit life, you know. And this whole thing is, it is really a process, you know, listening to this book, I was very impressed by that. I was like, wow, some of these words and stuff, I, I might too have never heard from, you know, but I've heard some people say them to me a long time ago, right? And uh, this is, uh, just, it's like we're massaging it. It's such mm -hmm. a beautiful, beautiful Thank way you. to do that, Sheena. So Thank congratulations you. on that huge speed. And I'm sure this is going to go for some head somewhere. And I congratulate you Thank as you. well as Shirley keeping this alive and learning how to spell the words. Um, Blackfoot is, it is a challenge. And I think with all your research, I had a visit with Shirley just not too long ago. And uh, she had mentioned some, some of the words. And um, they have a Blackfoot song there that they're saying, Old McDonald mm -hmm. had a, uh, I think I need to remember. And it went on. It was quite cool. And so, you know, I know I heard uh, somebody talking about the karaoke. And uh, so they're actually, a couple of days ago, or yesterday, they were singing uh, half English, half Blackfoot, but it was fun. You know, some of the new people that were there from the old folk health services, um, they did not that cheap way, but they were singing. They were doing an effort, right? Mm -hmm. And that makes it so much more fun. Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. So okay, we'll um, Oh, excuse yeah. me. Uh, we do have some questions and comments, if I'd like to get those in before we wind up. 
Uh, from from uh, Crystal, uh, she says, Oki, Sheena, you and Shirley did a wonderful job with your book, with your book reading. I look forward to seeing the work you do in the next publication. Well done. And then another comment from Amber. Thank you for sharing your beautiful story and hearing the Blackfoot words was so powerful. I could feel the words in my spirit. Such an honor to listen to you both. Where can we order a copy of your book? So Sheena, if you want to send me your email, well, I'll, I'll give that to Amber, and then she, uh, and then we'll we'll try to get that information out to as many people as we can. And then Angela has a, a, a question: How can more children's books written in in Indigenous languages change the number of speakers and writers into the future? Is this something you consider while creating this book? Is this something you considered while creating this book? And to increase the speakers, yes. Um, you know, <clears throat> but like I said at the beginning, while we still have our fluent speakers, we need to utilize them to the maximum. So anybody can write a story in English and it can be translated into Blackfoot. So, you know, go for it. If you can write, you can tell a story. Uh, talk to someone if you need to be connected with a, with a translator, you know, do that. Because I encourage you because it will expand the language. This story is only a very small portion of the language, but it's, it's this portion, um, I, wanted to I wanted it to reflect the teachings that I have received from my, from my ceremonial parents and elders that raised me. And so that's, that's what inspired me when I was writing the book as well. And I really like your, your grandma sitting beside you. <laughs> Yeah, we got we ordered these puppets. Uh, we have two sets, and uh, so if you ever want to come in and have the puppets sit with you, you're welcome to do that. We offer them here. I've had uh, I've had uh, a couple people come in to do stories, um, and the puppets were part of it. And we have a lot of uh, we're, we're slowly starting to open up again. So as soon as that happens, I'd like to invite the both of you. And one of you could be the granny and one could be the grandma. And then we have two kids that, uh, that got, just got names recently. Uh, so one is Little Bird, uh, Small Bird, and the other one is Moppy. So, yeah, <laughs> we had a contest. <laughs> so yeah, they're at my house right now and I'm going to do a story. Uh, I just make up stories and our last one was about sweetgrass picking. So that was good, yeah. So anyways, um, that's where we're at. And uh, this is actually the grandpa. So she really dresses them nice. The lady is named uh, uh, Laura Asham. She's from Sixaga. And she had the same idea you did. She want, Her daughter wanted to do a project where she was able to speak Blackfoot, but she wanted to use puppets. So she made these for her. And I think almost um, uh, in this area, I know a lot of people have bought them. Opagossum has a set. We have two sets, one for each of our libraries. I think Kathy has one at Kainai. And I believe the elementaries maybe in uh, Sepui has them, but I'm not really sure because I, I haven't been keeping, I'm not in the loop anymore of uh, Kainai Board of Education because I'm in a different uh, area now, but I try to keep in touch. So Sheena, if you want to use this in your classroom, I could come out and we could do an outreach with the kids, something oh. like that. So there's the possibilities are endless, eh? Yes. And I, I know kids listen to puppets and they're so powerful. I used to teach Head Start and it's just like, you know, they, they believe those puppets are real. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I just bought a puppet theater just two weeks ago. Oh, nice. Yeah. 
that's well, all. If, yeah, if you're bored, if you're school, because uh, that's the age group that could make the plays and present them or whatever you want to do a story that could present them to the elementary schools and uh, talk, to, talk to Jackie and tell her I said, Linda said that you might be able to afford to buy these puppets. <laughs> I don't know, but uh, it's something to think about. Uh, so th these are really nice. Uh, they're 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 uh, they're hard. They're kind of hard to operate, and you have to know how to be a puppeteer, which I'm not. I don't have that dramatic flair, but I can do the writing behind the scenes and all of that. So it's really exciting. Now here's a story we could produce. Yeah. Can you see it? Hey. <laughs> so anyways, just some ideas to be thrown out there. Okay, so I think we're just about out of time here, but uh, I just wanted to ask if you have any, uh, anything you'd like to add at the end here, because I know a lot of people, uh, you know, they might have missed something, they might want to know more information. We've been having the artist series and we had artists on for the last uh, three days. Uh, so I think there's an opportunity to combine the artists with the, uh, with the writers. Like you said, your niece, uh, Christy, is a really excellent artist. So, right. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to thank you, Linda, for the opportunity for Word on the Street. Thank you for acknowledging my book. I was so nervous when we came on. I, <laughs> we were trying to practice. We couldn't even do it right. <laughs> but anyway, thank you, Linda. And Thank you for helping to hopefully this promotes the book and yeah. promotes the use of the language. And I look forward to working with Trevor to do the voice. Yeah, what, what a commitment. Thank you, Trevor. That's, that yeah. is really giving back to the people in the best way possible. Yes. So I really think that's something that uh, you guys should splash that all over Facebook <laughs> and on the news because that's really something, I mean, a lot of people say reconciliation, but are they willing to help us do this to revive the language, exactly. to put the money in there so we can actually do that? That's the political part that we need to really be going after. Well, so. I used to get really upset when I was the Treaty 7 director and they'd be pumping all this money into language arts and literacy millions of dollars, but they would never give us anything for Blackfoot. Mm -hmm. That's all yeah. my argument is that we need equal funding for both if we want to mm -hmm. as a language. Yeah. So I do um, encourage our parents and our people to start speaking, like they say, even if it's just one word a day. Yeah. Speak it. That's Wake up our Blackfoot spirits again. Yeah, that's what one of the artists said yesterday. Even if you weren't learn one word, that's the beginning. That's the first step. So I really appreciated that thought. That was uh, that was an excellent uh, comment. Thank okay, you. Shirley, did you want to add anything at the end? Well, with the um, with the language, we have we're all working together, and I think we're. It's really good, and I like that. You know, uh, my colleague that I worked with years ago, his famous quote was, you know, um, let's put the language, you know, give it status, give it some kind of status, but that's what is needed now. Mm. To criticize them. Never mind, uh, you know, trying to uh, undermine one another. It's time we get, you know, Mm -hmm. and he's yeah. been for several years now and I still call on him for mm -hmm. you know some of his assistance and mm -hmm. I'm trying to pursue hey thank you yes thank again you. okay all yeah. right <laughs> so uh, here's a learn here's a word I learned off of your app you got any app get him at get him at some Okay. All right. So I think that concludes uh, our